Thank you very much, and thank you for the opportunity to present. Um, today I will be speaking on the issue of RCSI Bahrain, and CARTIS is an organisation committed to taking legal action on uh, international human rights issues from Ireland. Um, as RCSI Bahrain awards Irish medical degrees, um, as a result of Section 88 of the Medical Practitioners Act, there is an obligation on the Irish Medical Council to monitor and accredit RCSI Bahrain and its um, programmes of education. For the purposes of accreditation, the Medical Council has adopted the World Federation, medical, uh, World Federation for Medical edu Education Standards, also known as the WFME Standards, which I'll refer to throughout this presentation. These standards provide a mechanism for quality improvement in medical education, and they recognise the practical dimensions of medicine and the requirements for hands-on experience in clinical tuition. Thus, they demand that the locations of clinical tuition must be, number one, safe, two, appropriate, three, able to deliver training in the core competencies of medicine. And this includes, and I stress this, medical ethics. Um, there are also the same standards that are applied to med medical education programmes in Ireland. Um, many of the human rights abuses documented in Bahrain over the last two years have involved medical personnel and facilities, public and private, utilised by RCSI Bahrain. As the committee may already know, Dr. al Alekri, an RCSI fellow, is one of the medics who continues to serve a prison sentence for what the Physicians for Human Rights uh, termed treating protesters and giving interviews. Thus, from the perspective of CARTIS, there was an overlap between the human rights violations in hospitals and the WFME standards used by the IMC, or the Irish Medical Council. And I would like to sum up three major areas of concern that we have identified, and a lot of this is already detailed in our report, um, which has been sent around. The first is access and provision of healthcare. During the Arab Spring protests in 2011, uh, numerous medical personnel were tortured and imprisoned. And today, injured protesters and those affected by indiscriminate use of force by the Bahraini authorities fear using hospitals and clinics that are used by RCSI in the training of their students. And we have documented consistent allegations of abuse in this regard. Uh, we have included accounts from reputable sources of patients being picked up from RCSI utilised hospitals and so, who have subsequently been tortured. Uh, secondly, restrictions on medical freedom of expression in matters relating to healthcare. Medical personnel consistently report on their fear of speaking out. I would direct the committee to the annexes of our report showing communiques instructing doctors to pass information on su suspected activists to security forces. In some cases, patients are vetted before they are treated. Doctors who complain of human rights abuses are targeted, and I am happy to supplement accounts in our report with more ongoing examples which have occurred recently. In sum, the continuing uh, uh, detention of Dr. Alekri and the targeting of doctors, violations of medical neutrality have all had a, a chilling effect on the entire medical system that interfaces with the ongoing political system. The heads of hospitals, and I'd like to turn to discrimination, the heads of hospitals and clinics have been replaced with doctors from the Sunni sect. We have also documented how 30 RCSI students were denied work placements simply for being Shia. The examples are too numerous to mention here, and they have been documented at length in our report. For more information on discrimination and access to appropriate health care, I'd also direct the committee to the report of the Bahrain Centre for Human Rights on the politicisation of sickle cell disease, which makes for grim reading. Sickle cell disease affects mostly the Shia population. As I mentioned already, the WFME standards adopted by the Irish Medical Council require that the facilities used in clinical tuition should be safe, appropriate and able to deliver on the core competencies, including medical ethics. We submit that the facilities used by RCSI Bahrain are not an environment that lives up to Irish standards and that these allegations are of such a consistent and serious nature that they overshadow any claims of medical excellence. Um, We'd also like to highlight the fact that RCSI Bahrain is not immune from the political order that is prevalent in Bahrain at this moment. Um, you may already know that the conference on medical ethics that they tried to organise in association with Médecins Sans Frontières was um, blocked. And this resulted in the resignation of Professor Tom Collins, the head of RCSI Bahrain, who also confirmed the militarisation of the healthcare system and the hapless position of RCSI Bahrain in, in its ability to influence the situation there. Uh, RCSI Bahrain's strategic plan for the next few years completely fails to mention the unrest that has swept Bahrain and how it has uh, disrupted the healthcare system. Uh, to, and, but they have mentioned things like the economic downturn. RCSI's open days are now sponsored by the Bahrain Defence Forces. 
In terms of moving forward, um, it is a, what is of particular importance, what we think is of particular importance to the committee, is that until RCSI's education programme is evaluated by the Medical Council, the use of Bahraini hospitals is deemed to be approved by Section 88 of the Medical Practitioners Act. We would argue that this undermines the integrity of Irish standards and also of Irish medical degrees. The Medical Council taking a stance in line with international standards should not be done in an a la carte fashion. The Medical Council should proactively embrace these standards and apply, the, apply them as they would in Ireland. And this is explicitly required under the Medical Practitioners Act 2007. In terms of recommendations for action, we respectfully suggest that the committee recommends to the Minister for Education and Skills that RCSI Bahrain falls short of Irish accreditation standards. And this situation prompts appropriate action in accordance with the Medical Practitioner Act of 2007. And likewise, the committee should bring it to the, minister's, to the minister's attention the adequacy of other streams of Irish accreditation, including the National University of Ireland and Quality Qualifications Ireland. We urge the committee to invite the Medical Council to explain how they intend to approach the accreditation of RCSI Bahrain and the human rights concerns affecting the sites of clinical tuition used by RCSI Bahrain. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Okay, um, thanks very much. I will now take uh, questions on the matter, starting with Senator Power. 